in the United States. Moving on from United States to United Kingdom now, earlier this week, Rishi Sunak, an Indian origin MP from the Conservative Party, created history in Britain after he was appointed as the new Prime Minister. While this is a major boost to his political career, he's taking over at a time when Britain is grappling with spiraling prices and falling GDP. He has promised to fix these issues in his initial address at Downing Street and later in the Parliament. CNBC TV 18 Sanjay Suri wraps up how the first week played out for Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunuk has quite energized the whole country. He's coming across as confident, aggressive. We saw him dig into Labour at Prime Minister's questions, that most visible of markers. The Conservative Party had been floundering all over the place. He, unlike his two immediate predecessors, has no undoings to be embarrassed about, and he is gathering the party together. I will unite our country not with words, but with action. I will work day in and day out to deliver for you. With the FDA, we do have a problem. The two prime ministers spoke, after which Modi tweeted to say that they agreed on taking the FDA forward. Sunak did not mention the FDA in his tweet. He said there was agreement on economic cooperation. Perhaps we can't read too much into that difference, but there is a conflict here, and that conflict has arisen as a result of Sunak taking over as the Prime Minister of Britain, he had pledged in his 10-point uh, policy statement on migration in Clause 7 that any trade agreement with any country must be conditional on that country accepting return of its undocumented overstairs. The financial policy statement has been put off till the 17th of November, and this is the second time it's been postponed. Itself an indicator how difficult this is going to be. This really is going to be the tough nut to crack. So far, Rishi Sunak has been in campaigning mode. We've had very little from him on what he specifically would do. I will place economic stability and confidence at the heart of this government's agenda. This will mean difficult decisions to come. And India would be looking for an early conclusion of the trade deal with uh, the UK. But it's not going to be an easy negotiation. And negotiations are definitely not over. Let's uh, get you the important news coming in from India. A high-level meeting of the UN Counterterrorism Committee took place in Mumbai. The delegates first gathered at the 2611 memorial to pay homage to victims of the 2008 Mumbai attacks. The meeting is focusing on the use of new payment mechanisms in terror financing and use of AI and drones in carrying out terror attacks. I caught up with David Scaria, Chief of Branch, Counterterrorism Executive Directorate of the UN Security Council. I began by asking him if the UN Counterterrorism Committee had failed in bringing the perpetrators of 2611 to book. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it as a, as a failure or anything of this kind. I think uh, what we've seen today was a, a, a very emotional ceremony. And um, it allowed all of us uh, to reconnect with victims and to um, express our, our, our deep sympathy uh, to what they're going um, through. Um, I see this me me meeting in the same place uh, where the attack occurred actually as a huge win, uh, as a strong message that we are continuing with what we are doing, we are resolved to continue uh, countering terrorism, and that we are continuing with our way of life, including hosting meetings. So symbolically, I see the, meet the hosting of the meeting in this place as a huge win. Right. The message that came from all member states in the meeting was also very important. Several member states have uh, um, emphasized the commitment of all member states to bring terrorists to justice. This is something that our office uh, is deeply committed to. And wherever we go, whenever we go, in India or anywhere else, we repeat the same message, bring terrorists to justice because this is what is the moral and the legal duty of every member state. Right, and uh, this meeting would lead to a framework when it comes to fighting terror financing and also use of technology and striking a balance between the benefits of technology and technology for the use of terrorism. 
shifting focus to Brazil now, where the widely talked about election for the final round of polling on the 30th of October. 156 million voters will decide the fate of two candidates with starkly different rhetoric. Why is this important for democratic values and climate change? Madhiha Mujavar and Radhika Udas give a quick snapshot of why this election is significant. Incumbent President Jair Bolsonaro and his left-wing challenger Lula da Silva are attempting to woo Brazil's poor to swing the polls in their favour. As inflation crosses 7%, the Central Bank of Brazil has raised interest rates to as high as 13.7%. The country's economic growth is expected to grow at a moderate 2.8%. Unemployment rate stands at 8.7%. While Lula has been promising to eradicate poverty, Bolsonaro government is providing temporary cash handouts to ease the pressure. Former army captain Bolsonaro won the 2018 presidential elections with his anti-corruption campaign that had brought down his rival Lula, who had ruled the country from 2003 to 2010 and enjoyed a 90% approval rating. Bolsonaro's campaign is a continuation of his conservative pro-business agenda. Bolsonaro has been criticised for the handling of the COVID pandemic by dismissing it as a little flu. He drew heavy criticism for allowing deforestation for the land exploitation in the Amazon rainforest, posing a climate threat to the world. On the other hand, Lula wants to put the state back at the heart of economic policy making and government spending, promising a new tax regime that will allow for higher public spending. Lula also promises to work to reduce carbon emissions and deforestation in the Amazon, which has increased by 75%. Lula won the first round of elections, securing 48.4% votes versus 43.2% for Bolsonaro. The country has seen widespread violence and clashes between supporters of the two candidates. With the race looking tight, Bolsonaro seems to have taken a cue from former US President Donald Trump. He has already made unsubstantiated allegations of electoral fraud. This has sparked fears among many that the results could plunge the country into chaos. We are heading into a short break, but coming up, Russian President Vladimir Putin rules out use of nuclear weapons in the Ukraine war. A special discussion with former Indian ambassador to Russia, Ajay Malotra, when we are back. <laughs> 